Alexa, tell me a fun fact. A cat has 32 muscles in each ear. Welcome, friends, and thanks for tuning in. In this video, Alexa and I will teach you the basics of creating an Alexa skill, like the one we just interacted with, to tell us a random fun fact. Let's get started. If you're going to follow along, you'll want to go to developer.amazon.com and then to the Alexa developer console. So on the top left up here, come into Skill Builders and Developer Console. Now you do need an Amazon developer account for this. This is gonna be different than the account that you just use to log into the regular AWS console. If you're prompted to create an account here on the screen, go ahead and do that. It's free and easy to do. Once you're in here, let's create skill. And I'll call this Tiny Technical Tutorials. Primary locale is gonna be the language and country where you'll build your skill for me, it's English US. And then scrolling down, we're gonna go with a custom skill and we're just starting with a boilerplate sort of hello world template and then gradually we'll update it to include that fun facts functionality. So custom is probably already selected for you. If not, then select that. There's also other things that you can try out here, which I'd encourage you to do, but then scrolling down the method to host the skills backend resources, we're gonna go with an Alexa hosted skill. That means that all of the plumbing and the wiring and everything on the back end is hooked up for you, and it'll also give you a Lambda function and endpoints. This is definitely the easy way to get started when you're new, and we're gonna go with the Node version. There is also a Python version here if you wanna go that way. So with that selected, come back up to the top right and say create skill. Once again, there's different templates you can play with here. We're gonna start from scratch, which actually gives us some hello world functionality. So it's not really from scratch, but it's a nice thing that you can build from. So with that selected, we'll continue with template and success. Now over here on the right is a nice checklist that'll kind of walk you through all the different things you need to do to build out a fully functional skill and even monetize it. We're not gonna go through all of these, but we do wanna update our invocation name. And this is what a user will say to invoke or to begin to interact with your skill. For this one, I'm gonna say TTT fun facts. And then up here on top, save the model. This will save the changes that you just made. Now next you need to build the model Depending what you've done, this might take a few seconds or even a couple of minutes if you've made a lot of changes. So let me start that. But basically the front end part of an Alexa skill or what's called the interaction model is basically just JSON code. And it's gonna include these things like your invocation name, your utterances and placeholders for responses that are called slots and so on. We'll get into some of that a little bit more later. But when we click on that button to build the model, it's basically bundling up that interaction model and all of the other things and building it into a format that we can then use to test and use with the Alexa service. So a lot of things going on behind the scenes here. Luckily, you don't need to worry too much about them. But that's why it takes just a little bit of time. All right, and complete. Now let's go test this to make sure that we can interact and launch this skill. It's not gonna do much at the moment, but let's just make sure that we're at least that far. So come up to the test tab. And I'll close out of some of these notifications down here. The first thing you need to do is enable test for this. By default, it's gonna be off. Let's toggle this to development. This is basically a simulator that you can use to do your testing without having to deploy to your phone or to an Alexa device. Close out of this as well. And we'll say open. You can also talk here if you click on the microphone, but I'm just gonna type to make things easier. Open and then the name of your invocation, which for me, remember, was TTT Fun Facts. I'll hit enter. Welcome. You can say hello or help. Which would you like to try? That's the default response that we get for this skill. Nothing too exciting yet, but we do have a skill and we're able to invoke it in the simulator. So pretty easy to get started with this. We're gonna get into some of these other tabs a little bit later, specifically the code tab, so we can make this skill do something more interesting. But first, let's talk a little bit about the terminology and how an Alexa skill works behind the scenes. It all starts with a user, a human, and they're gonna say something like, Alexa, open TTT Fun Facts, the invocation name for the skill in our case. And the device, whether it's an Echo or an Alexa app on your phone or the simulator that we're using, that device will then send the utterance, the thing that you said, to the Alexa service, which of course is running in the cloud. 
Alexa then sends a JSON request to our code. And most of the times that code is gonna be in a Lambda function, link above and below if you want the basics of Lambda. It doesn't have to be, but for everything that we're working on, it will be. And then the Lambda function is gonna send a JSON response back to the Alexa service. Alexa will then process it and send it to the device. The device then outputs speech and or visuals, if you have something like the Echo Show with a screen, and that completes the cycle. So basic request response type of model that you might be familiar with. All right, let's go back to the developer console and look at this a little bit more. Now you might have noticed earlier when we were back here in the simulator that over here on the right, we've got our JSON. And sometimes there will be multiple inputs and outputs here, so you might need to toggle that. But this is what's going on behind the scenes just from typing in the simulator text box over here. And of course, if you're on a real device, that input would be coming from your voice. So for this skill, we want our user to be able to say something like, what's today's fun fact? And if we were to hit enter here. Sorry, I don't know about that. Please try again. It's gonna fail. What we wanna happen is pick a random fun fact and say that back to them. To do that, let's come work in the code tab up here. So here on the left, you'll see a folder for skill code and then Lambda. I mentioned earlier that the back end of your skill will usually be a Lambda function. And since we're using an Alexa hosted skill, the code is right here in the console for us. So super convenient. But first let's come into package.json. In this file, you'll specify the skill name. So let's update this from hello world to TTT fun facts. We'll leave the version the same. For description, we'll say, Get random fun facts. The main file is index.js, which you'll see over here. And then we've got our dependencies down here. ASK for Alexa skills kit, SDK core, model, and so on. So these are the dependencies that are gonna get pulled in when we package this thing up. That's all we need to do in this file. So let's save. And next let's move over to index.js. This is where the heavy lifting is gonna happen for the skill. You'll see that we actually have quite a bit of code here, even though this is just a standard hello world template. Let me increase the size of the font here to make it a little bit more readable. But starting with the launch request handler, this is the code that gets called when somebody first launches the skill. And the speak output, this should look familiar. This is what Alexa told us when we launched the skill earlier. So welcome, you can say hello or help and so on. And then we have what are called intent handlers down here. We have a few different intent handlers. This is where the majority of work is gonna happen in your skill. So we've got one for hello world, we've got one for help, one if somebody wanted to cancel or stop, and so on. Now, just for another quick terminology check, let's go back to the slides real quick to make sure we're on the same page. Let's say that a user says something like, Alexa, tell Tiny Coffee Company I would like a latte. Let's break this down from Alexa's perspective. The first thing we have is called a wake word, and that's always going to be Alexa. Next we have the launch, which can be something like tell, ask, open, launch, or use, some other things as well. And then we have the invocation name. You'll remember that we updated ours in the developer console to TTT Fun Facts, but in this example, we're saying tiny coffee company. And this is the thing that the user says to start interacting with your skill in particular versus some other skill. Then we have an utterance, which is the user's spoken request, the thing that they would like to do. So I would like. And then finally, we have a slot value. These are optional, but you might define something like latte, coffee, cappuccino, espresso, and then you make that slot value to handle those different inputs or different sort of variables that might come in. So putting these last two pieces together, we could have an intent called order drink intent. And then this whole thing is called the interaction model or sometimes referred to the front end or the voice user interface. Another example, Alexa, tell TTT fun facts to give me a fun fact. And here our intent could be TTT fun facts intent. All right, hopefully that helps. Let's go back to the code. Here in index.js, we have the intent handlers. So again, basically the code that's gonna run in response to an utterance or a request from the user. And this is where we wanna add the code to give the fun fact to the user. But first we need a list of fun facts. 
Now, in the real world, you would likely call an API or a database to get these fun facts, but just to make it easy for you to follow along, I'm gonna hard code some facts here into a new file. I'll provide a link to this code in the description below if you wanna grab it. But let's create a new file. So I'll click on Lambda here and new file. I'll call this funfacts.js, create file. And then I'll paste in some fun facts for my clipboard. So just a handful of things here, and then I will save. And then back to index.js, we need to basically hook up that file. So at the top, we'll do a const here called facts and require single quotes dot backslash fun facts. And then let's start updating some of this boilerplate hello world code rather than saying hello world down here in the hello world intent handler. I'll just comment that out and add my own new line. And this is gonna grab a random fact using math.random. And that's the line that will do that for us. All right, so let's just incrementally do some updates and testing here. I'll save. And then before you do any testing, you wanna make sure that you deploy this as well. That'll push all of your changes out. Once it's done, you'll get a timestamp up here showing that it's completed, so that looks good. Let's come over to our test tab here, and then we'll do open TTT fun facts again. Enter. Welcome, you can say hello or help. Which would you like to try? So that's still just the default response, that's okay, but I wanna show you the JSON over here. We've got our default response. If we toggle over to viewing two of two, one thing to point out here in the output or the response is this should end session equals false. This basically means the skill is still alive for a reprompt. It's keeping our session open to get additional input from the user. So we can input something else. We could talk or type at this point because our session is still open. Now, the only way to get to our next response is to say hello or help. We're gonna update that in just a minute, but let's just type in hello and see what we get. Almonds are a member of the peach family. And there's our random fun fact. Pretty cool, huh? All right, let's go make a few other updates here to our code so that we're getting rid of that hello world stuff. So back to code index.js. We want to update everywhere the hello world intent is used. So I can do a control F to find this. We're going to replace that with TTT fun facts intent. So we'll find the next instance. Here we go. Update this one. And then down here at the bottom, you want to make sure that you're updating it here as well. Okay, back to the top of the file. I'll close out of this. In our launch request handler, that initial welcome message, welcome, you can say hello or help. Let's update that. This will be welcome to TTT fun facts. To get a fun fact, say, tell me a fun fact. All right, let's save this. And we also need to deploy. While that's working, let's come into the build tab here and work on the front end or the interaction model. So interaction model over here on the left and then intents. You'll see that there are six here that we just got out of the box by default. The one that we wanna update is hello world intent. So I'll click on that one. And here are the things that a user might say that we're currently handling. So let's update these. Rather than hello, let's say, what is today's fun fact? Or tell me a fun fact. I'll update a few of these others and be right back. All right, I have seven total, so let me just delete some of these extras. I'll click on the trash can icon over here. So now we're down to just the four. You can add other things if you'd like here, but let's save this. So up here on top, save model. And then once again, build model. This might take us just a few seconds. While we're waiting, if you found this helpful so far, I'd really appreciate you hitting that like button so it can spread to more people and also consider subscribing for more content like this. Thank you so much. 
Now, the eagle-eyed among you might have also noticed that we failed to update the name of the intent here. So very importantly, rather than Hello World, this should be TTT Fun Facts Intent. So that will match with what we updated in our code. All right, make that update. We'll do the save and build again. I'll pause the video for just a second and be right back when it's done. Okay, looking good. Let's go to the test tab now and see what we have. All right, so open, TTT Fun Facts, like we've done before. Welcome to TTT Fun Facts. To get a fun fact, say tell me a fun fact. There we go. So that was the response that we put in our code. That part's working. So let's do tell me a fun fact. Rubber bands last longer when refrigerated. <laughs> so there's a fun fact for you. All right, and now if we look at our JSON response over here, we don't see that should end session over here at all, which means by default that is true and our session has now ended. If you wanted to keep going back here in your code, we have this line here for a reprompt, so you could just get rid of those comments and keep the session open for another response from the user. But for the purposes of this video, I just wanted to keep things really simple and get you started. Hopefully this helps. You could also test this out on your phone. So you just need to install the Alexa companion app on the phone. Make sure you use the same email address that you use to set up your developer account. And then you can launch the skill and talk to it through your phone. If you want to do more advanced things, check out the link in the description for a 90 minute course that gets into topics like how to save state in your Alexa skill, how to make speech sound more natural and how to debug. But that does it for me. I hope you found it helpful. Again, think about hitting that like button and subscribing. And thank you so much for watching.